Hello, everyone. Welcome to an, the next episode of Insecurity. We are in episode two. That means that we got past the first one, and we're we're rolling down the hill. Today, we want to talk about money and sending money online. So, again, we have Tom Webster here, and he's going to explain to us how sending money is, through the internet is either a very good thing or a thing we should be worried for. So, Tom, how's it going? Pretty good. I just got done uh, sending my thousand dollars to my Nigerian prince. He's a faraway cousin, so waiting for the big payout. Well, so how did you decide to send it? Did you use uh, the wire transfer? Did you send him some um, snail mail? No, we, we were negotiating that, um, but he said he could take care of it. He just needed my bank account number and social, so I hooked him up with that, and he said he'd take care of the rest. Well, that's a good thing. I mean, hopefully you're going to get a big payout, and you're not going to have to pay taxes on it. Yeah, he's, he's a great guy. He's really, really nice, really helpful. So... Well, I mean, what are we talking about today? We're talking about trying to send money through the internet. And we have all these crazy ideas that we see online. Chase, use Chase, use Square, use Wallet, use Dwala, use all these weird things. But I, I want to talk about the two big ones, uh, Square Cash being one, the new one, and Google Wallet. So I guess let's start out with Square Cash. Did you play with it yet? I did. I did. And it doesn't really have much of an interface. Um, and uh, if anyone's taking a look at my security talks, they would know that I kind of consider that a benefit. There's no ciphers to mess with. There's no real options or levers to hit. There's no real way to hurt yourself. Honestly, it's throw in your, your debit card number, shoot it off, the other guy gets an email, click the link, put in their debit card number, and then it looks like it does a reverse payment or a, uh, a cash return that stores can do on your debit card to give you the money, um, which honestly is a pretty ingenious way to do that. Well, so we started yesterday, and, and my experience was, my first experience was, that's it. I was looking for a splash screen. I was looking for something. And the first thing I did is I opened the app up, and we're talking about Square Cash. And it said, how much money do you want to send? So I chose a dollar, and I sent it to you. And so I hit send, and it said, now we're going to open up an email dialog. You put the recipient's name, and you hit send. Me be not, being able, not being able to read quick enough, I said, wait, wait what's going on? I got a little lost. So I initially sent it to myself. <laughs> and, and, I, and, and now I'm waiting. I'm like, it said sent. So I'm, I'm scared, like, what, what did I just do? So I go to my email, and I see four emails from Square, and I'm going, wait, what's going on? After going through the threaded parts of Gmail, it said you can't send money to yourself. So now I'm a little <laughs> like, okay, I made a mistake. let's try this again, but this time let's read the directions. Chose the dollar, send it off, I, ch I put Tom in there, and it sends off, and it says, okay, check your email. And I'm like... Uh, okay, I check my email. It says, please enter a debit card. I said, that's an ingenious way of doing it. Who would have thought to do a debit card? I thought they are going to make you do all these other type of things. So I put my debit card in, and then, Tom, what happens on your end? On my end, I get an email that says, hey, you've got $1. And uh, actually, the subject line is great. It just says, dollar sign, one, and that's it. So I'm just like, huh. That's kind of cool. So I click the link. It takes me to Square's website, and it says, hey, you need to receive $1. Go ahead and put in your debit card number, which is a little weird to me. I never use the card numbers unless I'm paying for something. Um, but it needs to validate that it's a good card, and then it looks like it does a return or a reverse payment. I'm not entirely sure. Um, on your card to give you the money. So it's like if you went to the dollar store and you returned an item for a dollar, that's basically what's happening to my card. Now, was that weird for you? Like you said, it was weird, but if, it, on my end, it was weird. On your end? It, it was a little different. It's Honestly, it's unlike any other money, sending, shipping, service I've ever used. Um, it's way different than PayPal or Dwala or anything else or even Google Wallet. Um but somehow, when you think about it, it just makes sense. It makes things a lot easier. So once I put my debit card, they said, oh, now we have your debit card on file, which got me a little freaked out because 
it's like, uh, wait, what? Like you said, there was no interface. There's nothing there. And they're like, oh, we have this on file now. And I'm like, wait, what file? <laughs> I, I didn't create a file. I get it, it associates, I guess, with the email address, which I guess is is the simple way to do it. And if and so and look on my end, it says what's the security and everything else. So you get it. So after you get the money, I get an email back that said that Tom accepted the money. It's gone now. Have a nice day. So it's look from from a practical standpoint. After I did this whole reverse loop once. I was fairly confident that I did it right. You obviously got the money. And the last part is, it says you uh, one to two business days, correct, on your end? Right. So so we're going to come back in one or two business days, and we're going to see if it's actually there. I suspect that there shouldn't be a problem, and everything is going to be fine, and I'm going to lose a dollar. You're going to gain the dollar. And we, we just sent money fairly simply. It, it wasn't after that initial thing of me not reading and – doing it again it was simple so it, it oh, looks go good ahead. um i think we have to talk about probably square's biggest competition in the sending money space right now um besides the behemoth that is paypal but that's kind of a an overwrought monster as it stands currently um we probably need to talk about google wallet which i've got some contention with well, I mean, as do I, but you go first. Um, well, my my first real experience with uh, with Google Wallet would be Google Checkout before that got rolled in. Um, and it was great. It was a uh, PayPal competitor. You throw in your credit cards, your debit cards, your you know, whatever, and pay for stuff online. Um, you give them a shipping address. Google takes care of all that, makes sure everything's kosher on that end. You're done. It worked easy. It was simple. It was awesome. Um, then Google released their phone app, Google Wallet. Um, you can throw in, uh, on mine, uh, on my carrier at the time, I had to use the prepaid Google card before I could buy things at Google I.O. Um, it worked pretty well. Um, no real complaints. The security was okay. They had some issues with rooted apps that they've seemed to work out, um, and then the big feature hit Gmail, which is you can email money to people. And you go down to your attachments, you know, you've got stuff like uh, attach a picture or send a video or send them a link. Now you can send them a dollar sign. And you just put in how much money you want, where it's coming from, and email them cash. It sounds like a really, really awesome, a really integrated way in the Google universe to ship people money. And it's not. It sucks. And I think you're right on that. Because somebody would send you money, you would have to click on it, then it takes you to the Google Wallet site. And and you're not it's just not there. So you sign in and it says to get your dollar, to get your X amount of dollars, to get your hundred thousand dollars from the Nigerian prince, you have to do the following, and I think this is where we differ. I had to do some pretty crazy things, as in, I had to give them a debit, I had to give them a bank account number, which is standard, because they're, they're going to do a wire transfer, but I had to take a picture of some documents and mail it off, and I think we were talking pre-show that it was a social security number. I don't exactly remember what it was, and you say you didn't have to do it, but I had to no. like, take a picture and send it to them, or upload a file, and I was thinking, like, this is, this is crazy, like, I, I trust Google enough with this, but if this was anybody else, I would probably stop right there. And I guess you did it a little later than me, so they probably got rid of that whole thing because they were probably turning people off. It's it's really, really weird. And um, honestly, the reason that um, most sending money services that um, – aren't exactly stores, ask you for, like PayPal, will ask you for a bank account. Um, Dwala will ask you for a bank account. The reason they do that is to prevent chargeback fraud. So if I have a credit card, and if Square let me use a credit card, which I don't think they will, but we need to test that. Um, if I used a credit card, I could send you $500, call up the credit card company and say, oh my god, someone stole my card, hurry, kill it. And then they'd take off the transaction, charge it back to the manufacturer, Square would be out $500, and you would have it. That way, we both win. And then we, we play this game a bunch, and we each split half, and 
it's it's stealing from Square, it's stealing from companies, and the way you prevent that typically is by asking for a bank account. So if there is a chargeback, you can just do a an electronic funds transfer and take it right out. Um, Square didn't do that because they're using debit cards. Google Wallet does. Um, my main issue with it is it doesn't work at all. It's it's odd that uh, a system designed you know, for sending money to people, you can't actually get the money out once you receive it. Um, so there's there's a story, and, and have, have you sent money? Have you received money on Google? I've received, uh, I think somebody sent me a penny, because the difference, okay, the difference between the two is you can send a penny versus a dollar, and it's easy to send 100 pennies to a friend rather than 100 single dollar bills. <laughs> so my friend sent me a penny, and to be honest, I don't... I don't exactly know where it went. I'm sure it went to some. It went to some cash thing that if I went to the Google Play Store, I'll be able to use. And I don't remember exactly if there was a way to get that money out. I'm assume. I I assume there was. If you're saying there isn't, I'm going to defer to you and say okay. But I, I think that there was. But like like you said, it just it it didn't work smoothly. You had to log in. You had to accept this. You had to accept onerous terms, and. And then again, you're still dealing with money. Do they have access to my credit card? What do they have access to? It just it got a little convoluted. Whereas the Square Cash seemed like just dead simple. Yeah. So so here's the story behind Google Wallet. Um, we all went out to lunch. Me and my my coworkers went out to lunch one day, um, and we're trying to get out of there. It's a hurry. It's just like okay, look, just throw it all on one bill. We'll split it up later. Whatever. I know where you work. Um, so we we split the lunch bill and. Uh, I'm just like, hey, you know, I've got access to this Google Wallet emailing money thing. Let's try it out. And, you know, over the next two weeks or so, we'd go out, and then one of us would, would pick up the tab and then just move money with Google Wallet. And it would show up instantly. It would show up in the email instantly. It'd say, hey, you've got money in Google Wallet. But you couldn't actually pull it out. And it took about a week, week and a half for those funds to finish transferring to your Google Wallet so you could try to pull it out, but it never worked properly. It always threw some weird error or said, hey, you can't actually do this or this isn't finished. It got to the point that um, the remainder of the money I had in Google Wallet, I just you know started spending on apps, music, whatever, because... I couldn't get it out. It was locked into Google's little ecosystem. There was no way to pull it out uh, without some sort of weird error happening. Granted, didn't take it up with support, and this is while you know this is within the first month of the system's release. But since we tried it over the first two weeks, we haven't looked back. It was awful. Well, let me stop you there. So I went back into my Google Wallet account just now, as you were talking, and I, and it said wallet balance available, 0 0.01, because a friend sent me a penny. And I there was a drop-down arrow that said uh, transfer to checking account, the checking account that I linked up. And I hit it. It said, how much would you want to transfer? I hit OK, one cent. And it said, OK, now we're transferring. It will, your pending, your money will be transferred by Google in less than an hour. It should take two business days to appear in your account. Now, I don't know if they're going to allow me to transfer one cent. It looks like it went through. I didn't get an error message. But now this is, I don't know, three months or four months after it went live for everybody. Right. So maybe they figured it out. And maybe I it's like, so. so, I mean, the good part about Wallet is that I can see all my Google Play purchases, my uh, Nexus 4 purchases, the Chromecast, all this other stuff uh, in a nice convenient shell, so I wanted it to work. And look, what I just saw now is making me say, oh, wait, I set it up, and now it seems to work. But it goes back to the bigger problem. Google is designed by engineers for engineers. So f for us, this is dead simple. We got it. We understand mm -hmm. what we need to do. We have to, we have to hook up a bank account. We have to do this. We have to do that. And it'll just work. But someone like someone that doesn't get it, they're not going to get this. Whereas they get an email. They, we, we do that feedback loop with uh, Square Cash. I send you, you get an email that says, claim your dollar. You go there, it says, please enter a debit card. You put it in, and then two days later, you get it. Nothing is simpler. Yeah, it's it's the typical Google has an interface problem issue. Um, and Google, for the most part, they always have an interface problem. And they're getting better. They're getting a lot better. Um, 
so much so that sometimes it seems like designers are running the company instead of the engineers, which I have different thoughts on. But um, you know, hopefully, wallet is fixed, and I, I'm going to have to try it out again. Um, but my initial impressions were very, very negative. I mean, like, like I, I guess you should take another stab at it because, uh, like I said, I think it transferred. I have a transaction ID. I have all this. See, it's giving me more information. It goes back to what you said. It's just too much information. You just want to send some money across. And I want to bring up another story that I had with Chase Bill Pay. And the story goes, I go with a friend of mine, we go to Costco. With Costco, the mem the person on the card who is a member has to pay with a credit card that says their name on it also. And so my friend tried to pay uh, tried to pay with his debit card, they failed. So I got money. It was something like fifty two dollars. So he goes, Okay, I'll just send you a bill pay. I said, oh, fine, whatever. I so I get this email from Chase and it says, Your friend wants to send you money. So I click on it and it follows me. You need to create an account. I said, okay, fair enough. I create an account. Okay, you need to create a username. Okay, you need to create a password. But here are the restrictions on the password. So I pull up LastPass. I generate a secure password. Apparently, there is a limitation to that password. That didn't work. So now I'm getting frustrated. I put a password in. Then it says you need a PIN code. Like, now, what's the difference between a passcode and a PIN code? So I put a four-digit PIN code in and said, no, this now needs to have eight additional characters, upper, lower, or special characters. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I getting myself into? Then I hit next and I get all these errors. So I called my friend and said, look, can you either mail me a check? I'll wait. If the, the $50 is not a big deal. I can wait a few weeks. But that was my – and then I see the commercials. Oh, Chase Bill Pay. This is easy. And I go back. No, it's not. It's really difficult. <laughs> I don't know. Did you? I don't. I guess you haven't experienced Chase Bill Pay yet. No, no. Honestly, um, most of the Bill Pay systems that I've seen look so shitty on the front end. I never bothered to look into them any deeper, and I probably should. But you know, after your story, I kind of don't want to. Well, then we had the thing with uh, TD Bank. So TD Bank is, I guess, again, a regional bank in the area. They they have a bill pay. Turns out their bill pay actually mails a paper check. So you so I would put your name in. I would put your address, and I and you would get in a couple business days a live check that you can cash. You can then do whatever you want with it. And I said, wow, that's pretty nifty that they give you like a real check. So maybe they have these different methodologies of sending money depending on the bank, but you know what? There's nothing I obviously rather in my bank account where I don't have to think about it. But you know what? If I got a paper check, I get a paper check. So it doesn't seem awful. Um, I mean, as much as I hate paper checks, it seems like kind of the lowest common denominator, dead simple thing to do if you have to send a, a payment that way. I mean, if you look at a paper check, there is a paper trail. You have all the information. You get the you get the screen capture uh, with your statement. So I mean, yeah, it's the inconvenience of either snapping the picture with uh, one of those apps or going to the bank. But at least now you have a record, just like Google Wallet or Square mm -hmm. Cash. I want that record rather than just cash. But let's move on. You talked. You looked at the security behind Square Wallet. What did you find? Um, well, generally, it looks like um, it's got the same compliance and the same security behind it that just about any online store would have as far as credit card transactions go. Um, they're PCI compliant, um, which to do payment processing online, you kind of have to be nowadays. Um, as far as cryptographic and computer security, it looks like... Um, they're they're very up and up on keeping their systems patched, keeping their users trained. Um, SSL Labs for their SSL report gives them an A rating. It's not the greatest. They're um, they're still kind of providing old ciphers that are known to be bad. Um, so if you have an older browser, it will use something bad. Um, if you're going at this with IE6, it will use a bad cipher. Um, other than that, uh, no perfect forward secrecy on that. Um, key length looks to be about industry standard. 
Uh, to be honest, the security of Square um, looks good. There's nothing that makes me jump out and you know clap like a seal and do a bunch of tricks, but I can't see any real fault with it. Now, so let's ask the the really simple question. Which, if somebody said, "I need," mm -hmm. so let's have, let's replay that lunch scenario again. You're with your friends, and mm -hmm. you had to choose. Would you would you say, you know what? Just do it, send it to me through Square Cash. Yes, yes, one hundred uh, all the time, one hundred percent of the time. Yes, Square Cash. Okay. Because at least I would have the money. That's true. And so let's go. Let's take another scenario. You're really trying to. You're. You, somebody says, "Hey, I need to find a way to send money. Send money through the internet." Would you recommend Square Cash over anything else? Honestly, it depends on the situation. Um, if you are both in the U.S. and you both have a Mastercard or a Visa debit card, yes, that's fine. That's easy. Now, if you're both super nerds and you live halfway across the world. Um, send your bitcoins. Well, that that's again a topic for a, for a few like ten, at least ten different shows. But right. I got that. So so what it seems like now? Do you use the Square dongle, the the little Square credit card reader? Yes, yes, I do. And do you like that? It's awesome. It's honestly um, some of the most innovative engineering and cheapest engineering I've seen in a very long time. Now, um, Oh, go ahead. Now, oh, I was gonna say. So, if now you, that if there was ten dollars that you needed from me, would you do the square? Now, would you pay the the tax for the for for me to swipe my card, or would you send it through Square Cash? Hmm. At this point, I'd probably do Square Cash. It it honestly seems a little bit faster and a little bit easier because with the um the Square Wallet, uh, if I remember correctly, it goes into account that you have to empty out, which adds another step. It's great for businesses. Uh, not so great for giving your buddy ten bucks. I mean, look, I've done it. My dad, my dad tried to scam an ATM where if you uh, if you swipe ten times a month, you get I don't know, you get an extra quarter point on your interest rate. So he would he would run his credit card, give me ten dollars, one dollar at a time. <laughs> and at the end of yeah, at the end of the month, I had couple. I got ten bucks, and I would transfer it. I would be happy. My dad would get his quarter point, and we would move on. And you know what? Maybe the, this this may not be the best idea, but you know what? It's another spot where you can have money somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Not that, the, and there's good and bad with both of that. But it's yeah. like, okay, you need, if your a bank account gets stolen, but you have this extra one, it's it's money right there. Now, granted, it takes two or three days to move about, but again, it's, it's there's an intermediary. In the yeah. So so I mean. And so now I have to recommend this to friends. And I'm looking at Square Cash, and like I said, in the middle I was a little a little hesitant. But talking about it, it just seems that this is now really simple. Everyone pretty much has a smartphone. Uh, giving a debit card online doesn't seem that, that scary anymore versus do the feedback loop that PayPal does and Google Wallet. Uh, where we're going to deposit two microtransactions and you have to come back to us later and, and put them in. And not like an hour later, like we're talking a week later. And that's a problem because how many times are you going to do this? And I told you before we sh the show started, I was putting in my account, and I guess you put in the account, with a very li uh, minimal amount of funds that if something mm -hmm. went wrong... And we all recommend that. I think I, re I recommend it, I think you do, to have a separate bank account for specifically that reason. Right, right. So I use my, uh, <laughs> amazingly enough, I use my PayPal debit card for this because, you know, I can always just deauthorize things through PayPal and there's some good protection there. Um, now, what's, what's Square, what's your bank going to do if somebody ganks your card number and sends themselves, you know, $10,000? The banks usually have compensating controls for that, but, you know, we'll, we'll have to see if that point ever comes. Well, I make it a point to never use my debit card for purchases, mainly because mm -hmm. what you said in the beginning. I like, and it goes back to the middleman. I like having a middleman. If I if I bought my new Sony full frame camera, it's two thousand dollars. If something goes wrong, 
with the transaction, the 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 merchant has the two thousand dollars. Whereas if I use my credit card, Amex now is on the hook for the two thousand dollars, and they have to mm -hmm. ask me. And I rather deal with a company that I not necessarily trust, but a lar but a company that has shareholders and people to respond to versus some mom and pop or some uh, some hacker in the middle. Exactly. So I was so debit cards to me, but I understand why they do it. And remember, a credit cards charge a fee. The debit card, dollar to dollar, or account to account, should be very, if a fee at all. I think I don't think there's a fee. Um, it's very minimalistic if there is one. Um, I don't think they're free. Um, I do have a tip for uh, all of our listeners. Um, have you ever gotten one of those really, really annoying, uh, like Visa? bank gift cards, one of the, the Visa, uh, uh, just standard credit card gift cards um, for 100 bucks or something. I get those all the time because my family has no idea what to buy me between all the tech I do and all the video games I play. Um, so I, I got one once from uh, an apartment. It was like this bonus thing. Hey, you had a friend move in next door. You get $300 in this gift card. Um, but it didn't work online because... The, the zip code wasn't set correctly. The name was set to something weird like thank you sir or something odd like that. Um, and I wanted to get the money out of it. So I took my square reader, swiped it, and then just charged the full amount of the card to myself. Paid Square's little minimalistic fee and I had all the money. I mean you, you paid the you paid the tax, what is it, two two and three quarter percent? Something but like again, that. But again, like you said, that's the problem with debit cards. You go to a restaurant, you have twenty you have nineteen fifty left and you charge twenty dollars and the credit card and it gets declined because there's not enough funds. Mm -hmm. And you have to know that fund amount before. So I that's a good tip. Take the money, tra use square. Remember, square is free. You you just ask them for the reader, it works. You do you set up the bank account once. And from th from then on, it's free. You do exactly what Tom said: swipe all your gift cards, get the money, transfer it to your bank account. Now you have cash, and it only costs you less than three percent. And uh, at this point, I guess we should mention uh, SquareUp.com. Yes. Any last things before we wrap it up? Honestly, I think that's about it. And we want we want to hear your comments. Last week we had a lot of good comments. We want we want the comments. Uh, tweet us. Tweet the in30 link for now. Uh, we're on Google Plus. We have the new domain insecuritieshow.com. So we're getting that set up. We want to hear topics. We want to hear reviews. Let's hear them. How, anything else? Last thing? Last call? Uh, nothing here. Okay. Well, let's say good night. See you guys. Okay. Bye.